Paulo Fortre is one of Atletico Madrid's all-time legends. He defined an era between the end of the 1980s and the beginning of the 90s and captivated the hearts of the fans. He landed in La Liga in 1987, the year in which he would win the silver ball, and was brought in by Jesús Gil. I'd won the European Cup with Porto and was at the Club World Championships in Milan. On the eve of going to Milan, there was an agreement that I would become an Inter player. The next day, after lunch, the president of Porto told me, Paolo, someone from Madrid is here. There are elections at Atletico on Sunday and he's a candidate. He's come here to speak with us and we're going to listen. I told him, OK, we'll listen to him. He arrived with lawyers in his private jet. I was wearing a tracksuit and some sandals that said Futre on them. He arrived, I met the president, and he looked down at my sandals. Your Futre, he said. That was our first meeting. I think we had a unique player-president relationship during those years. Of the many coaches Futre played under at Atletico, the one who had the most impact on him was Luis Aragonés. To say that uh, Luis Aragonés was the best coach is a little unfair to many other coaches. But I think it's right to say that he was the best motivator. He was the number one. When he wanted, when it was time, he lifted you up. You could be in your worst form, in a playing or personal crisis, and he would pick you up and make you believe with his phrases. I remember a few incredible ones, which had you saying, I can't fail, I'm going to run the game. One of the most memorable things about Futre's time in La Liga was his repeated battles with Real Madrid goalkeeper Paco Bullo in the derby games. Our war began in the second derby for me. There were 15 minutes to go and Madrid were winning. 3-1 or 3-0. He had the ball in his hands. I was a metre ahead of him, making sure he played it quickly. And he tried to provoke me. I was annoyed and he provoked me. And I did something really stupid. I took the ball out of his hands, scored and celebrated. Of course, the referee saw it and sent me off. The scandal was such that the next day I had to apologise with the president by my side. From that point on, Buyo was the devil to me. The games could be bad, because derbies are like that sometimes. And there's a lot of kicking going on. But everybody waited for the derbies to see what would happen between us two. Everybody waited for that, even in the bad games. There was always something. So the fans paid to watch the derby, but also to watch our battle together. After finishing his first spell at Atletico and playing for Marseille, Fortre could even have ended up at Real Madrid. 
I had various offers. Back then, you could only have three foreign players in the league. It wasn't like now. Real Madrid appeared, and I started to negotiate very seriously with them. It was Madrid, and it was playing for one of the two big sides in the Spanish capital. I was looking at it professionally and from an ego perspective. I began to negotiate and we reached an agreement. I had everything in place to sign and before signing, I went off to the toilet. My sons Paolo and Fabio were three and four years old and I suddenly thought about my family for the first time in the negotiations. I thought, my kids, I wasn't just any player at Atleti. How am I and my children going to live in Madrid? What am I doing? When I went back into the room, I couldn't sign. I've always been an Atletico man, but back then it was just business. I think I did the right thing, and it was one of the best things for me and for my family, and for the relationship I had with the Atletico fans, for them to remember me fondly. Fultre earned the affection of the fans on the pitch, and it's never faded. Despite only winning the Copa del Rey twice in his seven seasons at Atletico, he's considered one of the most renowned players to have ever pulled on the red and white shirt.